Hey, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio, and this is my Lowrider V3 CNC, which is a mostly printed CNC, cutting out the parts for the carcasses for two base cabinets. I needed to custom make them because their height is different than normal. Normal base cabinets are for a countertop height that you stand against in a kitchen, and these need to be more like for the height at which you would work while seated. I'm a full-time pastor of a church, and are, we're working on repairs and remodeling. We're putting in a new monitoring station at the back of our church sanctuary, where we will have both audio mixing, live stream video mixing, and security team camera monitoring. And so I needed to cut these out. The dimensionality of the lowrider is tremendous. I took the time to do the squaring procedures to check for square by measuring the diagonals across the opposing corners. And so the, the work product that comes from the lowrider is the dimensionality is just spot on. In the event that anyone with a lowrider or any kind of uh, similar CNC would have products coming out that were not the intended size, then you can adjust the E-steps to get it to print at the size that you want. My main dust collection right now is offline because I'm trying to upgrade it by installing a larger impeller and installing a big uh, dust deputy cyclone. And so I've got my dust hose rerouted for right now in a detour that goes over to a large shop vac that I have sitting near. And so I've muted the audio because all you would hear right now is the screaming of the shop vac, uh, which is even quite a bit louder than the router itself. I jokingly said that my low rider is basically the Toyota Corolla of CNCs, but these printed fenders designed by Peter H., a fellow V1 maker and designer from Down Under, make my CNC look like a Cadillac, and I really love the look that it has. You can see my floating Z dust shoe at work here. Later on during the work, some sticks and shards from the plywood got uh, clogged up in the works of the dust shoe, and I had to pause the job and turn off the router and pull off the dust shoe and clean it out. Um, if you notice the performance of the dust shoe going downhill, it's probably a clog. And so I think really the only way to try to prevent that would be to somehow design the dust shoe with a larger passageway. You probably noticed that there are holes. I did those off camera and those are for the little pegs that hold the shelves inside the cabinet. The Lowrider CNC is phenomenal at those kinds of tasks, drilling out repetitively tons of uh, dog holes or peg holes. And I know there are jigs that are sold for people who make cabinetry uh, by hand. But I, I got to say, having a lowrider CNC to cut all those many holes for you in a very short amount of time is a really wonderful thing. I'll put feeds and speeds on the screen here in a moment for those of you that are curious what bit I'm using and what my feeds and speeds are. It took careful planning to fit the carcasses for two cabinets on one sheet of plywood, and it came down to massaging sixteenths of an inch. I really wish that I had used a one-eighth inch end mill for cutting this. It would have made the margins easier to manage. As it was, I was continually having to run around and check whether screws were being hit on the periphery and even moving screws from one place to another to keep them from being hit because I was using a quarter inch end mill instead of a one eighth inch. You can really get this done with a one eighth inch and aside for the part of rabbiting out these grooves, which was a pocket operation, 
I really wish I had used an eighth inch bit on the profile cuts. So I've made a mental note for next time to try to remember to do that. Anyhow, I'll go ahead into a fast motion and see if I can get forwarded to the part of the video where you get to see what this thing looks like when it's put together. Here as I prepare to start on the second operation, I'm showing off the V1 engineering theme for the web user interface of Fluid NC, and also showing that the ability to browse files on the SD card and select uh, cut jobs to run can be done both from the web user interface of Fluid NC and can also be done from the pendant, the fluid dial pendant. It's from the same developers that brought us Fluid in C, and you can use it to browse files on the SD card and launch cut jobs. See the description for links to all these things. Here you see the web user interface of Fluid in C, and again for comparison, the user interface of the fluid dial. It has a preview, you can turn on the router and then you can hit the green button to run the job. Naturally, there was everyone's favorite thing, sanding. And I won't make you have to watch a whole lot of this. Uh, I'll speed through just a little bit of the sanding, but just know that it had to be done and somebody's got to do it. So there we are. It seems like a lot of people default to using three-quarter inch plywood for making cabinets. And I guess perhaps there might be some reasons for that but it seemed like really overkill. And so I made this with some, basically I think five eighths inch thick plywood and it worked great. And one of the reasons I think people have in their mind for using thicker plywood is to keep it from being split when you're putting screws in it, but you can pre-drill. And in my case, I felt even that screws were overkill I used a combination of glue and some brad staples uh, from this uh, pneumatic uh, stapler gun 
and uh, I, I had those little rabbited out grooves that helped with positioning for the bottom it's the bottom shelf part and uh, by use of glue the brad staples and some clamps I was able to get everything shaped up nicely I was using just kind of a cheap low grade affordable plywood because this didn't need to be the aesthetic quality of fine kitchen cabinetry uh, this is basically going to be fine if it's a little bit better than just normal shop quality so that plywood had a little bit of curvature to it but using the clamps helped to pull everything into shape and uh, came out with a pretty decently squared up and uh, everything flat and level a nice final product that you'll see here in a minute and I was just really really pleased with it this is my first time to ever make any type of cabinetry and so having the low rider to help me with dimensionality was great but you saw there where I was gluing up the face and the face itself the squareness of the cut helps you to get a squared face you can still when you're gluing and clamping it you can still get it out of square but if you find that it's out of square when you go to put it together you can use a clamp from one corner across to the opposing corner to kind of help get it lined back up i didn't really need to do that on the first base cabinet but i did have to do that on the second one I could have aligned my face a little bit more evenly distributed across the front. Some slight curvature of the plywood came into play there. I used 3D printed handles and hinges. The handle design I found on printables and the hinge design I made myself and then shared on printables. A dark uh, red mahogany stain from Minwax put onto the carcasses and then a honey oak from Minwax on the doors. I mentioned that I got two carcasses out of one sheet of plywood. That did not include the doors or the shelves. I got both doors and two shelves each for both base cabinets cut out of a nice piece of half inch thick plywood. It was a little better grade. And so here we have these nice shop quality plus they're not ideal they're not definitely the aesthetic of kitchen grade nice cabinetry but plenty fine for what we're needing and i was just really really pleased with how it came out especially since it's my very first time to make any kind of cabinetry this has been doug with design aid studio and until the next video i wish you happy making